The movie begins with a disheveled woman in a dark room writing on the back of an old calendar. She appears to be making a note of her daily activities and experiences, as the days pass, she crosses them off one by one. The movie then shoots to the present and shows a woman called Martina with her dog and a couple of friends traveling to an isolated hunting lodge in the Austrian Alps. As soon as they have settled, her friends Louise and Hugo go down to the local pub for a few drinks, Martina and her dog called Lynx stay behind to enjoy the lodge. The next morning, Martina wakes up and goes over to her friend's room to talk about their plans for the day. To her horror, she finds that her friends never returned. Concerned by this, she decides to walk down to the local town to look for them. Her dog runs off ahead of her but when she catches up with him, she finds him just standing there acting strangely. She walks down further signaling the dog to follow but all of a sudden, she hits into a mysterious invisible wall. Martina is shocked and doesn't know what is going on, she slowly puts out her hands to examine the wall and is left stunned by it. No matter how hard she tries, she is unable to push through it. It is a completely clear wall and she is unable to get past. After some time, she decides to go back to the lodge to think about what to do next. As she makes her way back, she comes across a farmhouse. Martina is very glad at seeing someone else and goes over to ask for help. Unfortunately, as she approaches the old couple, she bumps into another invisible wall. Martina has no idea what is going on and when she looks over to get the attention of the old man and his wife, she sees that they are not moving. They appear to be frozen in time, however, the water from the well is flowing like normal. She can't figure out what is going on and calls out for help, no matter how loud she shouts or how hard she hits the wall, the old couple don't even flinch. Martina finds the whole thing very odd and has no choice but to walk back to her lodge. She realizes that they are in trouble and has no idea what to do. The next day, Martina goes back to the old couple's home to try and speak to them again. Every time she goes there, she is met with the invisible wall but the old couple seem to have changed position. She finds it really strange that they appear to be frozen in time. One evening, she sits all alone in bed thinking about what to do. She falls asleep and when she wakes up, she is compelled to go to the front door, when she opens it, she is horrified to see that the invisible wall has moved closer and she is now trapped in her house. She reaches out and tries to push the wall back but it's no use, she screams out in frustration and suddenly, she wakes up. She realizes that it was just a dream and is so relieved. The next morning, she slowly makes her way to the door and opens it, to her relief, there is no wall in front of her door like in her dream. We then see Martina with binoculars trying to look around to see if she can see anyone to ask for help. She only sees the old couple frozen in time and no one else around. She believes that everyone in the small village must have died due to the invisible walls and gets very worried for her life. Sometime later, she decides to go for a walk and comes across a cow. Although it's just a cow, she is very happy to see another living creature. As there is no one else around, she decides to take it home and take care of it. She becomes very close to it and uses it for milk and names it Bella. One day, she gets into Hugo's car and drives down the road towards the village. She is determined to escape and drives towards the visible wall. As she approaches it, she puts her foot down. Suddenly, we see her crash into the wall and she manages to injure herself. Her plan did not work and when she checks, the wall is still intact and not even a little damaged from the impact. Martina decides to go back to the lodge and realizes that she will need to start looking after herself if she is to survive, she begins cultivating the land around her growing vegetables. One day while she is at home resting, she hears a loud disturbing noise and is startled. She ventures outside and is amazed to see a cat there in the rain. She decides to take it in and look after it. As there is no one else around, she enjoys the company of her dog and the cat. Next, we see that four months have gone by and she is running low on food. In order to feed her and the three animals, she goes out to hunt. She sees a deer and when she is about to shoot it, she manages to hurt herself when the gun recoils. She has no choice but carries and while walking, she comes across another cabin. There is no one inside but she is able to find some supplies and takes it with her. Tired from the day, she decides to make her way home and on the way, she sees another deer. 
This time she manages to get it but is overwhelmed by guilt when she sees it suffering on the ground. She manages to get home and that night, there is a severe storm and she closes her eyes and covers her ears to try and drown out the noise. Another few months go by and we see that Martina has accepted her new life. She works in the meadow harvesting the hay and growing her own vegetables. All the work takes a toll on her and she has developed swelling and sores on her hands. Martina knows that this is the only way that she can survive and perseveres until someone comes and rescues her. Over the next few days, her health deteriorates and she begins having more and more nightmares. Her sleeping has become non-existent but one thing that brings a smile to her face every day, is her pet dog Lynx. He always manages to put a smile to her face and lifts her spritz. Every time she feels like giving up, he gives her the strength to carry on. Lynx has been with her for a long time and he is the only thing she ever loved. One day while out walking, she looks up and sees a tree with human clothing. She is shocked and surprised at the same time, it gives Martina a sense of new hope. Over the next few days the weather took a turn for the worst and she cannot go out. She became very worried about her cats as they were still out and did not return home that evening. The next day, she becomes worried and she battles the cold weather only to find her beloved kitten Pearl dead. Martina is devastated as this is the first time she has had to deal with death. She buries the cat in the forest and returns home. Over the next few days she is distraught and not herself, she goes back to writing notes about her time trapped in the forest. Soon winter arrives and she discovers that Bella is carrying a calf. She cares deeply for the animal as it has been a source of milk for everyone and has kept them all alive. The next scene shows Martina assisting as Bella gives birth to a healthy calf. The winter is brutal and takes its toll on Martina. She is tired of being all by herself and not having anyone to talk to. She has lost hope and doesn't know if she will ever be able to escape from the village. It has now been a year since Martina has been trapped at the lodge. They decide to go up to the mountains to live for the summer and make the most of the next few months. She tries to make the most of the situation and finally seems to be at peace with it. She basks in the sun in the day and watches the stars at night, she no longer even keeps a record of what day it is and what she does. As winter approaches again, she has to go back to the lodge and take refuge, it is dark and miserable and Martina becomes depressed again. She goes back to keeping a journal to keep her busy and mind right. Spring soon arrives and she feels like time is passing her by, she has no memory of the previous time she has been writing. She is living each day without purpose and just trying to get through it as best as she can. Sometime later, we see her sitting deep in thought. She begins to question everything and thinks about her life. Looking out of the window, she sees a white crow and outcast from its black family. She resonates with the crow and likens it to her as she is all alone with nobody by her side. She feels sorry for the crow and offers it food. Her future looks bleak but she has no choice but to embrace it. One day when they are walking home, Link senses something is wrong and runs off towards the lodge while Martina runs behind. When she finally gets there, she finds a large strange man destroying her belongings. While Lynx is attacking the man, Martina runs into the lodge to fetch her rifle and comes out as fast as she can. The man has gone crazy and Martina shoots him. As the man falls to the ground, she sees that her beautiful Lynx has been killed by the man. Martina is devastated and is unable to comprehend living without him. She is consumed by grief and cannot believe that he has been killed. She finally brings herself to bury Lynx and lay him to rest. She cannot bear to look at the man and she pushes him over the cliff. Sometime later, we see Martina writing again about Lynx, she shared a deep understanding with him and he meant everything to her. As she writes, we see that she has finally run out of paper. The last scene shows Martina sitting there all by herself, she knows that she will never be able to escape from the village, this is her life now and the movie ends there. You guys are awesome if you have made it this far in the video. If you want to see more of such movie recaps, hit the subscribe button to become part of our movie family.